Acts 2.36 says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So there you have it. Jesus is made Lord and Christ by God, and therefore he is not God, but dependent on God, subordinate to God, and is separate, a separate being from God. Well, not really. If you look at the context and you look at the entire scriptures, uh, there is no way you can conclude this. You've got to ask yourself, if you are an anti-Trinitarian and you've used this verse, why does the verse start with therefore? Therefore is obviously pointing to something. There's a reason. There's a result. Where did this therefore come from? It's pointing back to the preceding verses which describe the reason why the house of Israel should know something assuredly. Know something with full knowledge. Something has been manifest. Something has been made known. And quite likely it is that God has shown that Jesus is both Lord and Christ. So why is there a therefore? It points back to the resurrection of Jesus in verse 32. God has raised him up. It points to Jesus being exalted at the right hand of God in verse 33. Him ascending into the heavens. Unlike David, Jesus is greater than David. He ascended to the heavens and he's even the Lord of David. So him being made Lord in verse 36 points to him being the Lord of David. He's not just the son of David, descended from David, but he is the Lord of David. He sits at the right hand of God. Far greater than any prophet, any man, he sits, he rests at the right hand of God. It's like all creation is bowing down and worshipping, prost prostrating themselves before the one true God. But Jesus is not bowing and joining creation. He's sitting at the right hand of God. It, it implies equality, certainly. So he's sitting and resting at the right hand of God. This is the result of his resurrection and exaltation, his enthronement to heaven. And therefore... Let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Why should they know that Jesus is made manifest as Lord and Christ? Because of his resurrection and exaltation, his enthronement to heaven. It all goes perfectly together. So it's, it's not enough to simply say Jesus is made Lord because of his human nature. It's the hypostatic union, you see. Uh, Jesus, according to his humanity, was made Lord by God. I had one uh, Trinitarian brother who kind of found that simplistic argument just too easy and not good enough. And he's right. It's not good enough. You can't just run to that all the time. You have to look at the context carefully. Simply read what the passage means. It's clear the therefore here points back to all this exaltation language of the Messiah. It's fully true that Jesus, in his human existence, was made Lord and Christ by God. It's obviously true. But that's not the full story. The full story includes God exalting Christ, God raising Christ, him ascending to heaven, being the Lord of David. So he's, he's officially inaugurated as king. He's made known as Lord. It's his coronation. He's crowned because of his resurrection and exaltation and thrown to heaven. It all goes together. So even though Jesus was born the Messiah, he was already the Son of God, he was already Lord, he was already uh, King. He had to be made manifest, made known, declared these things because of eventful moments like his death, burial, resurrection and ascension. And we see this supported in Romans chapter 1, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So in, in Christ's humanity as Son of Man, he is descended from David according to the flesh. 
but according to the Spirit, whether this is a reference to the spiritual nature of Christ or the Holy Spirit, he is declared Son of God with power because of the resurrection from the dead. So his resurrection, even though he's already very obviously Son of God, no matter no matter which uh, uh, Christology you take, Unitarian, Trinitarian, etc., he was already the Son of God in, during his human earthly ministry, but he's declared, made known, made manifest as Son of God because of the resurrection. So why can't the same apply to being made Lord and Christ in Acts 2.36? It clearly does when you read the passage. If you're going to argue that Jesus wasn't Lord but had to be made Lord and, and therefore he's not God because he depends on God, you have to also argue in order to be consistent that him being made Christ, which of course means Messiah, means he wasn't Messiah, but he had to be made Messiah at a later point, even though he was born the Messiah, because Lord and Christ go together. He's made both Lord and Christ, not just Lord, not just Christ. It goes together. So like uh, Acts 2.36 has nothing to do with him becoming Messiah by God later on. Likewise, it has nothing to do with him becoming Lord later on or gaining Lordship. He was already the Messiah from the beginning, therefore Lord from the beginning. Therefore, Acts 2.36 is not an effective verse to use against the deity of Christ. And I needed to address it because I, I think after all these years of having this YouTube channel, I haven't actually dedicated a verse, a uh, video to Acts 2.36. So I hope this was helpful to you. God bless.